Hi guys, and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. Thanks for coming back and checking out the channel today. Absolute pleasure to have you here with us. And this week, we're going to be looking at a different kind of application. It's categorized as a library optimizer, and it's called Unmanic. Now, you may have seen some videos about it. Our friends over at the Captain Chaz YouTube channel have covered the topic pretty well over the past few iterations. And I would highly recommend you check out his channel for some more videos on this particular application. The team over there at Unmanic have approached us and uh, asked us to have a look at their application and get it out to you guys to see what you think about it. And hopefully provide you guys with a new application you might want to try, but also sending some people over to them to give them some feedback on what you really like or what you might want improved. And that's what we're all about here. We love to help out our community, and so we are more than happy to give it a look. And I've been playing with it this week, along with Hawks, our community leader. Um, we've given it a good try, and I, I, I've got to say, it's a very, very powerful application. Now, you may or may not have seen other videos about other alternative tools which are similar in terms of library optimization, for example, TDAR. And if you have, you're probably thinking, well, well, that's a pretty cool tool. I'm here to tell you, though, that Unmanic is a lot easier. It's a lot simpler. However, it can be as complex as you like in terms of its functionality. But the ease of use is by far the simplest I've ever seen in terms of library optimization. So Unmanic is a very big encompassing tool. So it covers a lot of things, but if you're looking to optimize your library, whether it be for your media, for example, Plex, or for your movie TV files, or you just wanted to optimize certain streams or certain content that you've got saved on your libraries, this is gonna be the application for you. So if it sounds interesting, you want to check it out, you want to download it, be sure to stick around and let's get stuck into it. Okay guys, so we're here on the GitHub for Unmanic. Now Unmanic is Unmanic slash Unmanic on GitHub and the developer is Josh5 or Josh Sunnick. So thank you Josh for contributing to this project, for putting it together and for bringing it to our attention. So let's look at the description here. So Unmanic is a simple tool for optimizing your file library. You can use it to convert existing files into single uniform formats, manage their movements based on timestamps or execute custom commands against a file based on its file size. So an important note that I'm gonna make here from my personal experience is Yes, it does optimize your library, but there's a lot of tools that it can do in terms of its functionality by also using what they call plugins. They have got plugins that do all sorts of things. For example, one to notify Plex to begin a scan. So after you've converted the file, you've changed something in the stream, you wanted to change the audio stream, there is a plugin that will then say, go tell Plex to scan the library again and pick up the new file, the updated audio stream which is really, really cool. And we'll get to that when we uh, get to the installation. Now the list here is pretty expansive. Here's some main functions. So a scheduler built in to scan your whole library that do not conform to your configured presets. A folder watchdog. So when a video file is modified or a new file is added to the library, you'll be able to check that video against your configured video presets. And like the first function, if this video is not formatted correctly, it is added to a queue for conversion a handler to manage running multiple file manipulation tasks, and a web UI to easily configure, manage, and monitor the progress of your optimization. You get to choose how you want your library to be. So Unmanic can be used to transcode video and audio, move files from one location to another, execute file bot against files in your library, run any custom commands against files matching a certain extension or above a configured file size. So you can say, for example, all right, all the movies in my library that are over 40 gig, I want you to go and shrink them down. And let me tell you, it's able to shrink down sizes significantly. So one of the biggest selling points, I would say, especially with the price of hard disks these days, is space. As much as we think space is infinite, it definitely is not. And your wallet pays the price most of the time. So if you can save as much space as you can without losing on quality, for example, H.265 video format, then this tool is gonna to be able to do that. Now on top of that, you know me, I'm a sucker for graphs, and once it does optimize a file, it will actually give you a graphical output of how much space you saved before and after the conversion. So here we go, here's some screenshots I'll show you real quick. So for example, here is the conversion screen with the graphs and it's telling us how much we've saved in terms of space. 
from the original and to the converted. So how much has changed? So in this terms, 53% decrease in total file size. And just to give you an example, here's some of those plugins we're talking about. So you've got your audio encoders, you can convert you know, DTS to Dolby Digital. Uh, do you want to ignore files over size? Do you want to engage a mover? The notify plex option, uh, path ignore. So what Unmanic really gives us is a solid framework, which by itself is completely ready to use straight out of the box and very simple to understand and apply. But then you have the options to use these plugins to fill in gaps that you think you might need. So instead of overloading you with one application with heaps of stuff that you know really is just overwhelming at that point, what it gives you is a perfectly run application straight out of the box, and then you have the choice to then put in certain plugins that work for you. And that way you can ensure that you're working within your capabilities and what you actually want to achieve. So guys, let's get to the install. Now, I will say that Captain Chaz has actually done a very, very good first initial install on Unraid and also the initial sort of walk around and what things do. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'm gonna refer you on to Captain Chaz's video. I'll put it down in the description below. Check it out. He's done a really good job. He deserves a bit more recognition. And uh, by all means, why not? We can all help each other out in the community. Now, if you follow the video, you've got it set up. We're gonna pick it up from here. We've also completed a documentation for this on our docs page, docs.ibracorp.io. So here's our docs page. It's going to be published with the video, but I highly recommend you come and check it out. Just make sure that there's some things in here that you may not be aware of. We've got Captain Chaz's video embedded, ready for you to follow along. We've also got a just a quick 10 step guide on getting it installed and running. Okay, so enough fluffing around. We've read up on everything we need to. We wanna get it started. We wanna get installed. So once you follow the video or followed our written guide there on getting the initial container installed, you should have it running. Now I'm gonna click on the container and I'll show you what we've got in our container so you know that there's really not much you have to change. So just to give you a quick rundown, we went to the app store and we clicked Unmanic. On our network type, we always pick our custom Docker network. If you don't know how to do that, we have a video on that, one minute video. The web UI by default is quadruple eight. The app data location is the usual location, of course. We then have our media, movies, and TV. This is what's in here by default. That's not actually where my movies live. Especially if you followed our hard linking and atomic moves video, which is based on Trash's guide. Fantastic work by Trash as usual. Then your location is probably gonna be a little bit different. So just make sure it matches where your actual data is. In our case, we've got a data share, and then under there we've got media, and then we've got movies. Same goes for TV, so we'll go back, data, media, and TV. That's our location. We know it's in the right spot now. The encoding cache directory, if you want, you can use RAM. Now, Captain Chaz has explained how to use RAM for that, and uh, there is a little bit of an update here in terms of RAM allocation and things like that, if you wanted to limit that for yourself. In my case, I'm just writing it to the app data share underneath Unmanny. And the reason for that is simple, it's just for the purpose of this video. For you, I would probably recommend that you have a dedicated share created just for that caching of the unmanic files. It is a temporary location, of course, but you don't want it chewing up you know, your app data location or folders. So I highly recommend you probably make a share just for that purpose. Underneath here, we have the NVIDIA GPU UUID. Now, if you are using an NVIDIA card in your server and you want to use that for the transcoding or encoding in unmanic, then you would set this to either all or if you go to the NVIDIA plugin, which shows you your UUID for the device itself, you can put the UUID in here instead. If you're not using NVIDIA device, leave it as false or change it to false if it's not. Now, reading this top section is very important. It's got the advanced settings there. And it says, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, use these settings. And it tells you exactly what to do, how to get it, etc. Intel GPU is here and to limit CPU use is written out as well with an example. We've also added it to our docs just so you're clear as well. Limit RAM allocation, which is optional. If you feel like it might start chewing up a lot of RAM, then you can do that if required. For us, we're using an Intel GPU. So if I click to advanced view, first thing I'll do is copy this. And as it says here, install the Intel GPU top plugin, which I've already done. Then toggle this to advanced. So we'll go to advanced. And then right here under extra parameters, I've already added it, but as you can see, it's there. Once you're happy with all that, go ahead and click apply and start it up. Click done, head back to your Docker tab and we can see Unmanic is now running. So we'll left click and go to web UI. 
So here we are. We're inside of Unmanic. Straight away, it started up. Looking at this interface, it's not overly complicated. All right, we have three distinct areas of the screen. The first section you'll see is the workers. Now, as the name suggests, that's the part that's doing all the work. That's the nodes, if you will, and how many you can have is up to you. One thing I will add that stood out to me as a difference between Unmanic and TDA is that you don't have to mess around with any sort of weird file mappings or network shares to get two different workers to talk to each other. Pretty impressive. So instead, it actually uses API calls and it talks to it on the one address. So that's what we're going to show you. So here we're on the main screen. Pending tasks, anything that's obviously outstanding and completed is completed. Under the workers, we'll click on options and then you've got pause all or resume all workers. So currently there's nothing happening. We've got no workers actually doing anything at the moment. We'll bring that down. In the top left, we'll go to the settings. And here we can start having a look at the settings. Now we don't need to mess with the library files that should already be mapped for us. Do we want to enable periodic scans? Run off a one-off library scan on startup, follow sim links. Do you want to monitor the library files? So we'll go ahead and check that. Pending tasks. So if you have any pending tasks waiting on startup, you can purge them. Now this will be to do with your workers. So let's say how many workers do we want? All right, we're gonna say we want two workers. This is how simple it is guys to link to another installation. I'll call it Osiris 2, knowing that it's on the same server of course and in the second install. Then we're under remote installation. All we have to do is click add, type in the address just like the pre-fill shows you here. So let's say it was 192.168.1.2 and 8889, click add. That's not gonna work because I don't have one installed. So why don't we go do that? Let's go to the app store. So I'm gonna call that Unmanic 2. I'm gonna change the port to 8889 and then we're gonna launch it. So now I've got a second container sitting there waiting. Now if I come back to here, we click on there, that should then work, click add, and there you go. We've just connected another node. So how easy was that? We don't have to mess around for half an hour trying to figure out all these network shares. On top of it, we also can apply this methodology to something like a NAT network. We can bypass all those sort of issues that you have when you're trying to open ports or close ports or whatever the case might be. The API talks to the other installation perfectly fine and then it is there and set. Going into the settings for the application, you then got all these other options as well. So you can say receive tasks from this installation when workers are available. Perhaps we want to send tasks to the installation. And do we want to enable a distributed work account for this link? So if the target worker target is, for example, four, it will try and maintain four between the two installations. It doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be four, but it will at least try to have four running between the two. There's many reasons someone might want to do that. Maybe you've got multiple servers. Maybe you've got one container that strictly does movies and a separate container that strictly does TV. And in each container, then you have their own plugins and set up you know, perfectly for that in particular use case. So with the linking explained, let's go to the workers. So under the workers here, we've got work account one. The event schedule, we'll click on add. And we're gonna say daily. Every day at midnight, I want you to resume all workers, add event. Okay, and then you've obviously can add more you know, other ones as well. So if we want to pause them, at seven o'clock in the morning. I wanna say, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, I don't want it doing any more work at event. So then I know overnight it can do what it has to do. And in the morning, you stop. Cache path, we've mapped all that in our Docker container settings, so we don't need to mess with that. The next section we're gonna check out is the plugins. Now, this is by far one of the most impressive parts of it because you can really customize the ability of Unmanic by using the plugins. So under plugins, we can then first configure and add a new plugin. So go ahead and click add. And here's the list of currently available plugins. Again, I'll note that if you are a, you know, very experienced with Python, uh, you might wanna help by creating some plugins for Unmanic and for Josh and help push them to the official repo, or you can host your own repo as well. Um, so he said that, you know, he's very open to that sort of stuff. If you guys want to help contribute that way, go for it. So let's say this one here, for example, skip commercials in a TV show, also known as Comskip. I'm sure some of you might have a piece of media that has an advertisement burned into it. Well, this could be something that could help you get rid of it. So we'll go ahead and click to install the plugin. That's now installed, we'll click back, and there it is. Do we wanna enable it, disable it, or update it? You can do all that as well. So now that we've installed the plugin, we can then scan our library. 
So under pending tasks here, if we just click on the arrow, then we go to options and go rescan library now. You see it's gonna start going through our library files and it's gonna start picking up anything that's changed and what plugins we have installed and compare them. So if it goes through and it says, well, I found a file and it's got commercials in it, then it will process it. Or if we've got the plugin that says, you know, anything over 40 gig, I want you to shrink it down to 265, it'll do that. So let's type in 265 because that's probably gonna be the most popular option, I would say. And we've got three options here at the moment, at this point in time, which is H265, HEVC. You've then got the same with the NVIDIA GPU, and then you've got VAPI with Intel slash AMD. So if I go ahead and click that, for example, and you can see that both of them are currently disabled by default. So we'll check that, go to options and go to enable plugins. So now both of those are enabled. Straight away, it'll say that it's detected a change in the plugins config. So when we're ready, we have to resume the workers from the dashboard. So if we go back to the dashboard here, you see that it's red, it's been stopped. We'll just go to option, resume all workers. All right, and it's just more of a, just a thing, just in case you've selected the wrong plugin or anything like that. So now with those two plugins on, we can now rescan the library. So what I might actually do is go to settings, go to plugins, and I might actually disable this one for the moment. Um, on your end, that's something you can run. On mine, I don't wanna actually use it just yet, so I'm gonna disable that one. We'll go back home again, make sure we unpause all the workers or resume them. We can close this little notification now, go to pending tasks, options, and rescan the library. Now you can see that it's starting to fill up all of our pending tasks. So all we've had to do is install a plugin that we want to do a specific job and get it to scan the library. Now it's gone and done so, and it's gonna be looking for anything with commercials in it. And it's gonna process through it. Once it's done, it's completed. It'll move over to the right-hand side. So it will tell us the current runner is skip commercials in TV show, comskip, pretty easy. Now, if I added another plugin that said also, you know, I want you to change it from 264 to 265, then it will run both of those. It will say, I want you to do this, and then I want you to do this as well. Now, while we've only got one worker running, we've allocated that particular resource, but you can then again, go back to settings and we can add more workers if we want. We can say, well, I want three workers to run, click submit, go home. Now it'll start up those workers and they'll start doing something as well. And keep in mind by doing that, of course, you're gonna be using up more resources. So just be wary of that and what your system is capable of. But already, I think that's a much easier method to do what you need to do without any convoluted steps as seen in some other alternative applications. Like there are plugins for us to move files from one location to another, for example, after a certain amount of time. Um, we can execute Filebot against files in the library. So if anyone's used Filebot before, it's used for you know renaming or, or changing certain particular formats of the video. You can trigger Filebot using this as well. I think if you're one of our you know, community members who uses a media server, for example, Plex or MB, Jellyfin, etc., probably one of the most appealing things of this for you is, like I said, H.265, you know, if you want to save space, but also things like reordering the audio stream. So let's say you want English ones to be at the top instead of French or whatever it might be on the original file. Perhaps you want to generate a second copy of the video files in a much smaller format. So 720 at two megabits per second. So then you can have those as you know mobile friendly uh, versions of your content that you can do. All in all guys, right out of the box, it's very easy to use. I highly suggest you guys check it out. I'm already running three workers now and it's doing its thing without having to worry about it too much. Um, if we look at completed tasks here, we'll open that up because we haven't had a look at that just yet. We can see we're getting failed. Now, why is it failed? Well, let's check the details. So let's have a look. Command, it's checking, and there's no particular reason. Now, do you want me to tell you why it failed? I'm gonna say because there actually isn't any commercials in there at all. So if I was to keep going through, you're barely gonna find any because none of my content really has commercials into it. But as you can see, it still found some that did. So then it ended up actually making a change. And as you can see, it said, I'll pick that up from 12 seconds. It removed the content that we were missing. Now guys, I realized that, you know, someone can spend uh, 10 videos making this uh, about all the different things that this application do. It's very, very powerful. Uh, but I think even just at its basic level, you guys really enjoy using it because it doesn't necessarily need, mean you need to spend heaps of time. Someone just might want to open it up and say, I want everything to be 265. I don't want to mess around. I just want to do that. Uh, someone else might be like, I want that, but I also want these audio streams. Perfect. This gives you that architecture, that framework to do it. Now, if you like the application, you like seeing the video on it, you want to see more about it, 
like I said, please check out Captain Chaz's channel, but also let us know if you want us to cover it a little bit more as well. We'd be more than happy to. Uh, if you know a developer, if you know anyone in the community that wants to share some more ideas, if you have a request for future videos, please let us know. We are working really hard on our next cloud video, so please hang in there. We just want to make sure we get everything right um, because that's what sets us apart from the rest. So if there's anything we missed, be sure to let us know. Now, just in case as well, you need any more information, be sure to check out their docu official documentation page for Unmanic, which is docs.unmanic.app. There's a little bit more spelled out in there and it's constantly being updated by the developer. So it's always a good idea to check in there as well. Uh, versions change all the time. So thank you very much guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, there's so much to cover and we'd love to cover more of it if you guys want to see it. So be sure to let us know. We listen to our community and we care. Thank you all those who have been supporting us on our website with memberships. We also really appreciate you. You have been able to keep us going through this crazy time. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next Ibra Corp video.